Hello, my name is Jack Dolls, Director of Training at Tulsa Welding School, and today we're going to bring you a 4F on 3 8 plate running 1 8 70 18 rods. So I've got my machine set up. We're going to run it around 110 amps. I went ahead and set this up just where you could see it. Uh, so we're make sure we got it up and you can see what's going on. But I got it braced off, tacked off back here just where you can get it elevated and y'all can see what's going on today. Uh, so yeah, first pass, we're going to run it right up in here. Now, when you run it up on this on the overhead position, okay, you got to remember gravity's working against you here. So it's going to try to pull down your metal a little bit. So when you run in the overhead position, favor just slightly a little bit more to the top because gravity's naturally going to pull it down just a little bit. So when I run this first pass, I'm trying to put 60% of my metal is actually going up on this top plate and the other 40% is going to go on this plate. If you got 60% here and 40% there, you're doing it wrong. Like I say, get focused more on the top, let gravity you know, work with you instead of you trying to fight against gravity. But like I say, we're going to run it here and up in this up angle here, probably something like a 45 or so, but I'm going to favor the top just slightly a little bit more so I can make sure I'm getting that nice little fillet weld in there. We're going to run six beads or more in this T-plate and I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you about my rod angles and things like that as we're going through it. So uh, join me as we weld this project. Eyeballs. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish this up real quick. Okay. You know, I wanted to bring this up. I have a lot of people ask me about how to make tie-ins. You know, what's the best way? Uh, I like to, I call it the J technique, okay? There's lots of techniques, there's lots of ways of doing it, but I just draw a J, okay? So whether it be in the vertical or whatever position, let's just use the vertical for here. I'm gonna strike up, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna make my tie in, I'm gonna draw a little J and then go back up. Same thing applies when you're running it horizontal, any direction, whatever it may be. The J technique is pretty much the easiest one in my opinion to run. It's pretty simple. You just come down and loop it and draw a J. Doesn't matter if it's in the vertical, the overhead, the flat, the horizontal, you pick the position, I don't care. Just come down and draw a J. That's all you have to do. Come in, draw a little J on your slag, on your little tie in here. Let me get this off. I'll wire wheel it real quick just to show you. Ow. Ow. So like if we were going to tie in down here, I would just come in and draw a J, so I'd strike up ahead, come back, and I'm going to draw a J from off the bottom onto the top, and then I'm going to continue on. Same thing in the vertical, same thing in the overhead, whatever position, it's all it is is drawing a J. And let's do it again on the pay, on right here on the plate. Just come down, strike up ahead, come down, draw a little J on the, on the where you left off, making the tie in, draw a little J. A J and go right back on up. Okay, it's that simple. With a little time and practice, you will be able to get it, I promise. All right, so we got our first pass in there. It's all looking good. So now we're gonna come back and run our second pass. When we run our second pass, we're gonna focus in right on the toe line here. And now, like I say, on this one here, we're not so focused on the top as much as where we're just trying to make a nice bead right along here so where we can build ourselves to so where we can get the nice 45 on the overhead. So we're gonna run it. Uh, I don't know, this angle is probably about a 30 degree, maybe something like that. 
And like I say, you're going to run around this tow line. Okay? Let's give it a shot. Okay, and there's a couple things you need to watch out for when you're running the overhead. One, you gotta watch out for your travel speed. If you go too slow, I call it the beer belly effect, and nobody likes beer bellies. And so what happens is if you run it too slow, the metal starts to overroll itself. It's building up and it's overrolling, and basically like how you know a belly does, it rolls over your belt buckle. Well, the same thing will happen if you run it too slow. It'll start to roll over itself and create like a, a valley in between, and that's what you want to try to avoid. Another thing that I notice when people run the overhead is I call it the lazy arm, basically. As you're going down the plate, you're doing good, but as you get towards the end, you basically just start sagging your arm down. You see the beads start running downhill. It's really just because you're not keeping the rod up in there the whole time. You're basically getting a little lazy and it's just starting to go downhill. So just watch out for these things as you're running it. Like I say, make sure your travel speed is good and then make sure you don't get the little lazy arm as you go down the plate. All right, when you run them good, the slag just comes right off. Nice and simple. Let's clean this up real good and we'll continue on. I don't think I'm gonna hit with too much slag. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and run this bead in the top, number three. And once again, when you run number three, we're not gonna run it at this angle here because then we'll end up with undercut all along the top. I've talked about it in our in the uh, in the 2F and the 3F, same thing applies in the 4F. You got to watch your rod angles, all right? So like I say, if you're running it like so, you're going to end up with undercut along the top. And if you have undercut all along the top, it's because you have the wrong rod angle. So change your rod angle. It's not going to be, it's probably going to be more like, again, 60% on the top plate, 40% on this plate. So you want to get your angle something like this, not straight up and down, but something like this here, okay? Okay, so we've got uh, one, two, and three in there. It's looking good. Nice, smooth beads. No undercut. Everything's going nice. So now we're going to come back and run uh, number four. Okay, and four is just like we ran number two. Okay, that's all it is, just like number two. All we're going to do here is we're going to take it, and we're going to run it like so, right on the bottom of this bead, right on the toe line. They call these the toe lines of your weld. That's where the Toe, that's where the weld actually meets the base metal. They call that the toe line of your weld. And so we're going to put our rod right on the toe line of the weld, keep a nice tight arc length at an angle like so, and just run it all the way down. All right.
Okay, number five is just like how we ran number one. Okay, five is just right back up in the middle, like a 45, right in there. Just trying to make sure that we get nice fusion in there and a nice overlapping bead on number four. Okay, try this again. Wheel it real quick. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four in there, five in there. So now it's time to put number six. Six can be a tricky one, okay? There's a lot of things people do wrong here on number six. So let's kind of go through it. When you do number six, once again, you got to put probably 70% of your metal now needs to go up on the top and then 30 down here. But you got to slow it down a little bit. There is a little bit, usually a little bit bigger of a void there, gap, if you will. So you got to usually run it just a little bit slower. And I don't think you need to run it straight up and down, but a lot of people do like to run it straight up and down out of their stinger. You know, if you don't know, your stinger can hold it straight up and down. And some people like to run it straight up and down. Me personally, I don't want it directly straight up and down, I'm running out of the 45 up, but I am going to drop down just a little bit more so where I can make sure I'm getting that, uh, that upward angle on there and making sure I get a nice fusion along the top. All right, so let's give it a try. I'm gonna stop there just where you can see where I left off and how I was going, what my angle was. Let's clean this up real quick. And hopefully you can see in there and see it. You can see I've got nice little legs. When you look down the side of it, they're all the same leg links. All nice and smooth, looks like a nice little 45, you know, a nice little ramp in there. And this is how you do overhead welding in the 4F position with 7018 1/8 rods. I hope you enjoyed our video today. I hope you learned something. If you got questions, you got concerns, please reach out to Tulsa Welding School. I'll be glad to talk to you, be glad to answer your questions. Uh, if you want to see it, come by the school. I'll be glad to run some for you. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something today. And if you want to stay up to date and get tips and tricks to become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, click on our video. Thank you and we'll see you next time.